Thank you for joining us for today's webinar with MedNet Solutions and Statistics and Data Corporation. My name is Leah Davidson, Marketing Manager at MedNet Solutions, and I will be moderating today's presentation. Before we get started, I'd like to review just a few logistics. All attendees will be muted throughout the duration of the presentation. If you have a question for the presenter, please use the Q&A functionality on the right side of your screen to submit this. At the end of our presentation, we will allow a portion of time to address questions. However, if we are unable to address your question due to time constraints, we will follow up with you immediately after the webinar. Finally, at the conclusion of today's presentation, we will be sending a copy of today's PowerPoint presentation with additional resources on the topics discussed. And with that, I'd like to introduce today's speakers. Derek Gamber, has over 20 years experience within the healthcare technology industry, providing clinical solutions to hospitals, healthcare providers, pharmaceutical and medical device companies, as well as CROs. Derek has been with MedNet Solutions for over 14 years and in his current role of Vice President of Strategic Accounts, he focuses his time on large organizations that are interested in adopting the iMedNet eClinical platform under multi-year partnership programs. Derek earned his Bachelor of Arts in Journalism from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Jim Townsend joined SDC in 2008 and has since held roles of increasing responsibility within the organization, now serving as Vice President of Business Development. During his time at SDC, Jim has led initiatives pertaining to company growth and diversification of SDC's pipeline of work into multiple therapeutic areas. Jim holds an MBA from the Carey School of Business at Arizona State University and a Bachelor of Science in Construction Management from the Fulton School of Engineering, also at Arizona State University. And with that, I'd like to hand over today's presentation to Derek Gamber. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'd like to also thank you all for uh, joining the webinar today. By way of an agenda, Jim and I wanted to spend a few minutes going through a little of the background on both of our companies to set the stage for the topic of discussion at hand and provide a little perspective on each of our company's typical deliverables. We'll then go through the case study, which is managing the clinical trial rescue process, talking about the background and challenges, the approach and processes, and then the case study results. And as Leah said, then we'd love to turn it over for a Q&A session at the end of the, the webinar. So with that, I'd like to provide a little bit of background on the MedNet uh, solutions perspective. MedNet is providing e-clinical solutions that combine EDC with site, study, data, task, and operations management tools for the last 15 years. Our organization is well-funded, and we've uh, enjoyed substantial growth with over 80% growth the last year alone. Being browser independent and zero client allows the platform to be deployed anywhere in the world with ease, and that means that over 40% of our studies have had an international component to them. At the core of everything that we do, from building the technology to supporting project build to providing technical support, our mission is to empower life science organizations with innovative, effective and affordable e-clinical technologies that enhance and streamline clinical trial processes and ultimately improve patient outcomes. And for this, we've been awarded many awards over the past uh, few years. With over a thousand studies conducted to date, we have many projects that cut across the industry segments that you see listed, as well as every study type you can imagine, including many, many rescue studies over the years. And previous to my slide before, you can see that we've been deployed in over 70 countries across the globe. Next slide, please. What really makes the iMednet platform is unique is that it's a truly unified and homogenous platform, meaning that everything that you see on this screen is built within the same platform and inherently communicates with each other to streamline recordings and provide a centralized location for real-time actionable data. At the core of what we do is electronic data capture, which you can see there are clinical trial management components, EPRO components, randomization, inventory, uh, risk-based monitoring, IRB tracking, 
CSC adjudication that's all built within that same framework, and the configurability of the platform allows you to decide, based upon each study's protocol, what components make the most sense for the study at hand. It's this configurability of the platform and the ability to make role-specific to-do lists and study dashboards that allow organizations to push actionable information directly to the specific user types and really drive study uh, efficiencies for each of those individual studies and, and have recognized some incredible savings by being able to do their study workflow much more effectively. Next slide, please. The partnership that we've had with FTC dates back four years now, and we happen to have um, FTC and, and enjoy the partnership largely because they're one of our longest partners and most experienced in developing uh, within the iMedNet platform. And they have gone through uh, a significant amount of training and are one of our premier partners. In the next slide, you can see that we also work with a number of other institutions that have uh, been a part of the iMedNet platform. But FCC is, is one of our longest tenured partners within the platform. And with that, to provide some additional background on FCC, I'd like to turn it over to Jim Townsend at this point. Thanks, Derek, and, and thank you, everyone, for joining the, the webinar today as well. Uh, as Derek alluded to, uh, the, the, the partnership with MedNet is really key to, to STC and, uh, and our, our, our use of not only their technology, but uh, just collaboration over the last few years. And it, it lends itself pretty well to our, our whole mission statement as a company that you see here. So just briefly, SDC is committed to providing experienced teams who will take ownership of your needs and are positively engaged in your projects. Um, so, you know, and, and being the right fit for you. So it's, uh, we really pride ourselves on complete scalability and, and, and really kind of evaluating on a case-by-case -case basis with each of our clients um, what, that, what that right fit is and, and exactly what you're looking for. And, and, and just some high-level summary info. I, I won't read through uh, every piece of information here. And, and as Leah has mentioned, uh, these slides will be available to attendees and follow-up. Uh, STC has been in business since 2005, so over 10 years now. Um, our internal services focus exclusively on data-related services, so statistics, data management, um, and of course, the EDC development that goes along with those. Uh, we're a privately owned organization, stable organic growth uh, throughout our history. Uh, and again, we really pride ourselves on that high level service um, and, and, and not just being a pure production um, service provider, but also really catering to our clients' needs and providing that high level expertise. We've supported over 200 studies at this point. They've been a diverse range of size and scope, uh, multiple therapeutic areas. I'll touch on that just briefly in a, in a couple slides. And, and like I said, the, the scalability. We were really founded um, to be the stats and data management partner for, uh, for a, a commonly owned organization uh, early in, in, in FTC's existence and have really kind of just grown via that and, and replicated that relationship with others over the past 10 years. Um, so with that, we take customer service very seriously. We keep a lot of metrics, as you could imagine, as a data services provider, um, track on-time delivery and customer service on, on uh, each and every one of our projects and have got some pretty impressive uh, metrics that in that realm. Uh, also, efficiency and timelines. Uh, startup timelines, we'll get into that as, as we move into the case study. Uh, one thing that we don't necessarily touch on in this particular case study, but we, we really uh, evaluate and, and take, uh, you know look closely at is our closeout timelines. And our stats group delivers top line analyses three days after, three business days after database lock on all of our projects. And that's something that clients get really excited about. Next slide. I touched on our partnership network. 
Uh, the, the you know partner that, that really helped get STC started is a, a company that focuses on a single therapeutic area that is ophthalmology, uh, a company called Aura. And uh, our CEO had been a part of that organization within his family for many, many years and uh, founded STC uh, to really supplement their services from a data perspective, but then um, allow us to be therapeutically diverse. And so each one of the partners list, listed on the screen is a good fit in that they, they don't you know, offer competing services with SDC, uh, but each brings its own um, real expertise to the table and allows us to expand our services uh, really from anything, um, you know, in terms of early on consulting services all the way through full service and, and submission. And uh, our partnership with MedNet, as Derek alluded to, is really just complements uh, all of that and, and is a big reason why uh, we've been utilizing the platform for over three years is that commitment to the partnership as well as uh, the, what the technology can do for us. Uh, just briefly and wrap up on the overview, uh, therapeutically, like I said, we've got pretty diverse representation both in the, from a company perspective and a stats perspective. We do a lot of work in oncology, neurology, uh, the key therapeutic areas that, that, that you would expect, but also have uh, good substantial experience in, in other areas throughout the industry, both on the pharma and device side. And so we didn't want to spend too long on the overview pieces, and, and now we'll, we'll move to the case study. So I'll turn it back over to Leah for a brief intro there. Yeah, thanks to Jim and Derek for sharing a little bit more about MedNet and SDC. Um, now we'll dive into our case study and we'll discuss how both iMedNet eClinical and SDC played a role in rescuing this specific multi-study program to meet pretty aggressive timelines and goals. First, we'll walk through the background and challenges to better understand the sponsor's needs and also discuss the approach and processes undertaken to effectively meet these challenges. Finally, we'll discuss the key considerations and steps that were critical in meeting the client's rescue study requirements, ultimately producing successful results, as you'll see. So Jim, I'd like to turn it over to you to get us started. Sure, thanks Leah. Uh, just briefly a little bit on, on rescue studies in, in general, as uh, our, our audience I'm sure is, is familiar uh, with uh, rescue studies in principle, and unfortunately they're uh, more commonplace in, in our industry than I'm sure everyone would like um, and can occur for a variety of reasons. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, they're usually attributed to uh, one party or another not delivering on what was at least envisioned by the other party. And, and we're not going to dwell on that today, um, but really m focus more on you know what we've seen, what our experience has been, and what's worked well for us, and, and hopefully uh, share that with with the audience. Um, you know, from just just a little bit more from uh, what we've seen uh, in general on rescues, uh, the the scope that is requiring the rescue can can vary. Of course, we see a lot of studies where there's issues with enrollment or other uh, challenges on the clinical side or quality or you know. For, for one reason or another, things just aren't working out. It does get exponentially more complex, of course, when you bring the data services piece, it, piece into that and you know, evaluating where the project is at at the time that a rescue is determined necessary uh, and then looking at you know, what's the most appropriate course of action. So we really view our initial role in, in any potential rescue scenario as, as really being a consultant and helping the client evaluate where they're at, what they have developed to date uh, from both a technology perspective uh, and, you know, from a, uh, whether the, the stats plan is, is drafted or, and or finalized, data management documentation, et cetera. Um, and of course, the database is a key component of that. Where is it in development? Is it released into production? Is there data? Um, subject data entered and so those are all pieces that we really try and help our clients uh, determine and, and really look at it as you know we, we, we like I said early on view each client relationship as a true partnership and 
and um, it doesn't it's not in our best interest to push them towards you know having us come in and start things over from scratch if that's not what is is best for that particular situation and so um, I'll jump from that I'll jump into this this uh, scenario that we're going to spend a little bit of time on uh, today and the, the focus of, of the, the case study. Uh, it, it is a you know, currently ongoing uh, program and, and was, um, I guess, in a relatively early stage when, when we were uh, brought into uh, the, the program and, and the potential rescue was presented to us. Um, and like I said, we, we really want to help our clients look at, okay, you know, where are things at? In this case, there were uh, two, two pivotal trials uh, that were, uh, one was a little bit further ahead of the other, um, you know, and, and slightly different scope on, on one to the other in terms of randomization requirements, et cetera. Um, and so we looked at the technology that, uh, that had been partially developed at the time and how conducive that was going to be to, uh, you know, continuing on in that technology, uh, which wasn't IMEDNET, and uh, versus, you know, if, if we were to go in, uh, utilize what was there as a resource, but um, then build uh, the, the, the two study databases within our preferred environment, which is, of course, IMEDNET. And um, so, you know, in this case, after looking at the pros and cons, speaking with the sites, the sponsor, uh, and, and, and just really looking at everything, um, it was early on enough uh, that it did make sense to uh, come in and, and really uh, do a, an overhaul on, on what was there and, and start everything um, with a clean slate within IMEDNET. And, um, you know, that being said, there were pretty intense timelines that we were trying to hit. Uh, that You know, the, the client had, um, was under pressure from their board um, and investors in, uh, in hitting enrollment uh, deadlines, and which required us to look at a transition plan that uh, was going to allow them every opportunity to, to hit those target dates. Uh, and we'll get into the timelines itself in a, in a couple of slides. Uh, just briefly on the services that, that we uh, brought to the table were, of course, uh, data management, biostats, uh, and really focusing on our key expertise in, internally, but then also we're given the opportunity to refer uh, one of our clinical partners um, to, to the client to allow them to supplement um, things from a ClinOps perspective. Uh, and, you know, really, again, like we do with any rescue, playing on the, uh, or, or, you know, allowing the partner to thrive on their strengths uh, while supplementing it with our available resources and expertise. Next slide. Um, so in looking at the, the uh, when we were developing the transition plan, uh, it, it of course required immediate startup. Uh, we that you know both operationally and contractually. So something that is is of course key in this scenario, but we really pride ourselves on just in general is uh, being able to move through the process of uh, evaluating cost and and moving through the contract process uh, efficiently. And it, you know that's something that we feel like we do a, a good job on and, and uh, are structured well to accomplish uh, across all our studies. Uh, in this case, we went from, uh, you know, initial discussion with the client to sign master service agreement and, and study uh, contracts within two weeks. And so, um, you know, pretty aggressive uh, timeline contractually, but then also operationally in looking at hitting those enrollment timelines that I alluded to previously. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we developed this expedited startup process, but also ensured at the same time we were following our robust processes uh, in an expedited manner so that quality was not sacrificed in any way. And, you know, utilizing the IMEDNET platform in this case was just an ideal fit because you know, we've, of course, got the experience on now over 
going on about 50 total builds within the technology that our team has completed. Uh, to, and so that experience was key, but also just the, the flexibility of the, the technology itself all really allows for rapid development uh, while still maintaining the appropriate processes. Um, and, and, you know, partner collaboration was key uh, throughout, you know, this whole process, uh, both with the sponsor team, and I did want to highlight that, that in this case, it, it, it's definitely a two-way street, and hitting timelines, as, as all of you know, is also very contingent on the, sp the sponsor team being able to turn things around quickly. Um, and and uh, really, you know, having that level of responsiveness that is necessary to to hit the ground running and, and meet those timelines. Um, and you know, our our partnership with MedNet was highlighted uh, pretty uh, greatly throughout this process as well. Uh, Derek and his team, of uh, from a senior management perspective, were actually on site at SDC for one of the initial calls. Uh, with, with the clients to discuss the transition process. Um, and, and, and I think, Derek, is there anything you wanted to highlight uh, in terms that I might be forgetting in terms of the MedNet involvement uh, early on in this case? Yeah, no, thanks, Jim. And I, and I think from the, the collaboration um, component here, I think everybody knows how difficult these situations can be when there are multiple vendors. Um, not a great case in the sponsor's mouth from the previous situation. There's a lot of moving parts, condensed timelines. Communication and execution become the key to uh, the project delivery. And I think in this situation, we felt it was extremely important to send our director of technical product operations to the actual kickoff meeting and participate face-to-face -face so the expectations and responsibilities were fully understood and it gave us the opportunity to really support SDC with the resources that they were going to need to, to pull off the, the timelines and, and make sure that the sponsor had a very nice transition in place. I think during that kickoff meeting, we were able to identify areas of risk surrounding the randomization release and more easily plan for alternative met uh, methods should there be um, timeline implications that became issues during the, the development process. I think what really put the sponsor at ease in this case was having everyone together, participating in the discussion, understanding the deployment plans and ultimately any sort of risk mitigation strategy that we could deploy. I think that really made them feel like we had covered all of the bases and that everybody was on the same page working, you know, in collaboration together. Great. Thanks, Derek. So getting in a little bit more, I, I guess, down in the weeds on, you know, why IMedNet was ideal uh, for this this rescue uh, of these two studies. Uh, we talked about hitting the timelines, you know, the CRF development, um, working with the sponsor throughout that process on being able to, you know, not go through the the process that you may have seen back in historical EDC systems where, you know, you design a PDF of the CRF, approve that, and then build it within the database. Uh, we're really, you know, developing right within the technology. Uh, and that's something that, that you know, it, of course, is available in, in other technologies at this point. Uh, we really feel like we take it a step further and do uh, live, you know, uh, collaborative review cycles with our clients so that, you know, the, the technology allows us to make updates in real time as we're reviewing uh, the, the, the CRFs with our clients and even sh uh, demonstrating uh, the, the business logic or edit checks going in, in the, uh, the, the background and, and show the dynamic uh, forms as as, it, as things are occurring in real time, and it gives that the client a nice sense even before they go in and do a formal UAT uh, of what the forms are going to look like and what the f workflow is going to be like. And so that's something we feel like is critical in every case, but in this case in particular, as we're you know trying to uh, get in and and and, and meet these uh, stringent timelines. Uh, you know, outside of that, uh, one thing I will mention that, that 
didn't get a chance to earlier that I think helps us just in our enhanced familiarity with the technology that allows us to do all these things. SDT went through and did our own independent validation of iMedNet EDC as a CRO. Um, you know, MedNet has, of course, gone through the uh, full validation of their technology, and we've audited that multiple times uh, throughout our use of the system, but we've also done uh, our own independent validation um, of, of iMedNet, and, and that, you know, I think just, again, allows us to have that familiarity and, and help our sponsors understand, um, you know, what the most efficient workflows are going to gonna look like. Um, uh, talked about the, the UAT process, uh, that also helps to allow sponsors to design not only the, the standard workflow and forms, but also what their dashboards are going to look like. Um, help, you know, for them our standard reports, but uh, but also any project specific or project specific custom reports that they want to use, and then get them familiar with data sets on demand, which is a great tool within iMedNet um, that allows any system user, uh, regardless of, of their role, as long as the role-based security keep grants them the access to really pull data sets at, in real time at any point throughout the project. Um, and then, you know, also from a cost efficiency perspective, uh, we were able to look at, okay, you know, these, both of these studies were, were fairly unique in terms of the, the indication and, and requirements of the study, but there, where there were similarities, uh, we were able to pass through those cost efficiencies to our sponsor utilizing the libraries we have as our standard forms, but then even on the more study-specific ones. So um, that's something that the clients really respect and appreciate uh, from um, both SDC from a service perspective, but also iMedNet from a technology perspective. Next slide. Won't go through this line by line, but here's just a high level of the 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 timelines uh, for the transition period and the database development period that we put in place. Overall, from start to finish, uh, it was a, a nine-week window, and that got both studies up and running. Um, and, and, you know, I do want to caveat or clarify what that means. Uh, you know, the, the studies were offset by one week, but within that, uh, so we did a total eight-week uh, timeline for each study. Um, with that, that means from the day we touch the project um, for until it's released with UAT, full edit checks, sites are trained, ready for data entry. And I know there's varying um, approaches within the industry of, of how to quantify the database uh, or EDC build timelines, but we, day one for us is the first day we touch it um, through, uh, you know, uh, final uh, release, and that includes all specification development and UAT, the, the whole process. So, of course, these timelines don't have every line item within the project scope, but just at a real high level, kind of uh, what our approach was. Next slide. Um, key success factors, and, and I'm sure we'll get into more of these as, as we get into the Q&A as well, but uh, you know, outside of the technology itself, uh, and, and this goes into, you know, helping up front identifying the, the key components for each specific rescue, uh, understanding that everyone is, is unique. And so having that highly attentive, organized uh, lead data manager is key, but that also is true for anybody on the project team. Um, our statisticians are really involved throughout the whole process as well. Uh, you know, we, they want to make sure that what's, go, what's getting entered into the database is going to be conducive to what they want to see at the end of the study and ultimately what, what ends up being submitted. Uh, and so uh, they're, they're involved throughout, you know, form design, edit checks, uh, really the whole process in, in, uh, in helping expedite things. And so that was very true in this scenario. Like I said, the sponsor team was, was very attentive. Uh, 
and, and so that was really top to bottom. Um, and and it, again, it goes back to just teamwork, partnership, and, and, and making sure uh, that we're utilizing the technology and leveraging the tools that we have, but then um, not working against each other, but working with each other. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I can, there's only so much that I can speak to in terms of whether or not this would, be, would have been possible in, in another technology, but I can tell you that um, based on our prior experience, prior to uh, utilizing iMednet, um, we, we, uh, we had leveraged a industry-leading technology. I won't go into the names uh, at this point, but um, they're, they're just would, it just wouldn't have been feasible for us to hit the timelines uh, met here uh, with the quality that our clients expect. And so um, iMedNet is, is the tool of choice for, for SDC and, and will be uh, our tool of choice for the foreseeable future uh, in terms of our, our primary EDC solution. Um, and th there is a quote just at the bottom here uh, that, that comes from uh, a member of the, the project team um, that I think is a, just a, a nice testimonial to, to our work here. Um, and uh, won't read through it all, but uh, again, you'll have these uh, slides in, in follow-up. Okay, thanks, Jim. Derek, is there anything? Sorry about that. Derek, did I uh, miss anything, or is there anything that, that else that you wanted to touch on specific to the case? No, I, I think that, uh, that you hit a lot of the, the, the key points, Jim. I think the only thing that I would also add is that the MedNet's not a one-size-fits-most approach, and, and having the flexibility and the configurability of, of the build environment gave you a lot of options to offer to the sponsor, and I think that really ultimately put them in a better place where they could make decisions on whether they would do a phase release, whether they would have edit checks in before the first patient in. And I think having the, the ability to give them those choices made this process a lot more seamless in terms of, of giving them uh, a way to, to get involved in the, in the study and know that they have you know, uh, a, a say in the, in the development of the ultimate database. Okay, thanks Jim and Derek for thanks, walking us through that case study, appreciate it. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of today's webinar, we are sending a few additional resources um, included in that is the actual full case study that we discussed today. Um, there'll be hyperlinks within this text here, so you can link directly to these resources. And then following that case study are also some documents from both SDC and MedNet um, that will serve as uh, an additional resource in terms of rescue studies and just overall functionality and capabilities of each. Um, with that, it looks like we have plenty of time for Q&A. So if you take a moment, if you have any questions, to submit those in the Q&A bar, um, again, on your right side of your screen. It looks like we've had a few questions come in throughout the duration of the webinar. Um, Derek, I'll start with you. Um, the first question is concerning just the fact that there are so many EDC clinical vendors in the marketplace now. So what it is that it about iMedNet that really differentiates um, the platform from others in the marketplace today? Uh, yeah, sure, Leah. That um, is a good question. I think, uh, yeah, there, there's, there's more than a, a few uh, providers out there. I think MedNet historically has differentiated itself on, on, a, on a few different fronts. One being what I mentioned earlier in the presentation, which is a, a true unified platform that combines electronic data capture at the core with a lot of that CTMS functionality that covers the, the site study, data, task, and operations management tools uh, in a highly configurable format. And I think the other big piece is how we handle those role-specific to-do lists and, and role-specific dashboards that really drive that, that actionable information directly to the different user types so they're not having to search out information in the platform. They never have to know or remember which patient had which open query or had a, an incomplete case report from everything is, is driven to those dashboards via the reports that we offer in the platform. And I, as I just mentioned previously, I, I think in this case what really helped in this scenario was that FTC had the flexibility 
to offer a couple different uh, database build options to the sponsor for this particular initiative and, and really allowed them the opportunity to, to make decisions based upon the different scenarios. And I think that is a, a huge uh, component of the platform and is really unique is that um, you can deploy the, the solution in whichever way the, the sponsor wants to deploy it for that study. Great. Um, Jim, this next question would be for you. Um, how often does SDC get requested to actually rescue studies? And what are some of the most common reasons that these rescues occur? What are you observing? Good question. Uh, you know, sadly, like I said earlier, it, it does come up more than we would all probably like uh, in terms of frequency of, of rescues. Um, you know, I, I, I'd say it gets presented to us to at least act in that consulting role that, that I mentioned earlier, upwards of a dozen times a year maybe. Um, and, and ultimately our scope is going to vary because uh, in, in some of those cases it may make sense for after we've kind of helped the sponsor through the consulting period that uh, they're going to stick with the, the system they've got. Um, maybe we'll come in and, and uh, oversee things from a stats perspective. Um, that's kind of a sometimes a kind of uh, risk mit mitigation step that, that sponsors will look at. And so we've done that a handful of times for sure is, um, you know, had our stats team come in, come in, oversee uh, the, the process within the existing EDC uh, and, and then have us finalize or, or even draft the, the statistical plan and then um, see things through from a stats perspective. Um, cases like, like the one we're describing today, um, you know, are, are a little less frequent. Um, I, I'd say uh, three or four a year that, uh, that we, where we actually propose coming in and, and um, taking over things from a, either from scratch or taking over the um, remaining build services for, for EDC. Um, and, you know, as we've kind of built a reputation for being uh, good at handling these scenarios, it, it does uh, come up uh, more and more. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think a, a full data services rescue is as frequent as it, or common as it is for a, uh, you know, clinical uh, rescue where it's, it's purely a challenges on the enrollment side or, or you know, uh, just a lack of responsiveness or communication issues, things like that, but, um, you know, where, it, where, where it's just a, an issue that requires full overhaul of the, 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 the whole EDC system is, is a little less frequent, but something that we are comfortable with at this point. Okay, great, thanks. And Jim, it looks like another question for you, um, specifically re related to the content discussed today. Um, for these parallel run rescue studies, um, after the startup period in terms of conduct activities, how did things go? <laughs> yeah, good question. It would have not have been as good a story to tell if uh, they they didn't go well after we got the databases live. Uh, fortunately, uh, th that that's not the case, and and both of these uh, projects um, have, I guess, they've both had successful deliveries um, at this point from a statistical perspective, uh, and I guess that's kind of the ultimate test, right, is, is um, those successful timely deliveries at the, the end of projects with uh, high quality clean data. And uh, so they, in one case interim, in another case final deliveries have, have been submitted uh, with, you know, full C-disk deliverables, you know, STTM data sets and uh, the, the find.xml. Uh, and associated documentation. So uh, definitely proud of, of the, the end product here. And, and I guess the, that's another testament to uh, our success in, in delivering is that the, the client is 
uh, now a multi-time repeat client of ours that we've uh, got a number of active projects with now. So uh, we, I, I think we're, we're doing quite a bit right for them. Great, thanks. Um, this next question, we covered a little bit um, about this from both the SDC and MedNet perspective, but Derek and Jim, can you both talk more about the different types of studies that you've both conducted, um, whether that's different drug, device, phase, size, location? Um, Derek, if you want to kick us off with that question, just our variety of experience. Sure, yeah, I guess uh, the, uh, the, the blanket statement would be that there really hasn't been a, a study type that we have not supported within the platform. And I think, again, that goes back to the, the, the flexibility and, and configurability that we offer that, that allows clients to um, you know, have different options based upon their protocols. What I would say that, historically speaking, we've, we have a very strong experience in, in early and, and late phase um, towards the beginning of, of MedNet. Um, you know, 15 years in the business and over time have really about a 50-50 split between early and late and then, you know, phase two to, to phase three type of program. We've seen more activity uh, pop up in the animal health industry as well within the last year or two, just given the, the cost effectiveness of the iMedNet platform. And then from the uh, sponsor type, uh, I would say probably close to 60, 40, pharma to device sponsors that we've been working with uh, as an organization. Jim, I you know, can talk, I guess, from the, the FTC side of things. Yeah, that, I mean, similar response uh, on our side, pretty diverse range of, of size and, and number of sites, location, et cetera. Uh, our pharma to device Split is probably a little heavier on the pharma side. We're probably we're more like 70-30 or 75-25 uh, pharma, but more and more on the device side as well. And you know, I guess from a size perspective, if we look at it, number of patients, it's ranged from uh, you know first in human, uh, ten subject studies or thereabouts to all the way up to, you know, over a thousand uh, and um, and then location wise we've probably had over 300 sites uh, in the 50-ish studies that we've developed in iMedNet at this point. Uh, that's actually probably more than that. Um, but uh, and then location wise now uh, actively supporting really globally. Um, it, it's, it, that's, again, one, another one of the benefits for utilizing iMedNet. You hear a lot of people at different industry events making statements that a certain technology is, you know, well, it's a great fit for early phase or it's a great fit for phase three. You know, one thing that has really drawn us to iMedNet is we don't feel like there's a lot of limitation there, if any, uh, in terms of the size of project we can take on. And you probably saw on our partner um, slide early in the presentation, I mean, we've, we're working with partners across the globe now on, on projects. And so it's, uh, you know, proven itself time and time again on, on the functionality and usability from that perspective. Great, thanks. And it looks like we have one final question here, um, and Derek and Jim, I think you can both address this. Um, basically, what are the pros and cons of utilizing the iMedNet platform um, via a partner, CRO partner such as SDC versus building internally? Yeah, Derek, uh, do you want do you want to skip that off? We'll just jump in. Uh, either way, I, I can start. Um, you know, we touched on, of course, some of the the pros, and and I'm going to be a little bit biased to, you know, w w why it makes sense to work with a group such as 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 our own with with SDC. And but uh, but you know, there are of course uh, you do have the ability, and and there are advantages to uh, developing your own internal team. Um, you know, just, I guess just on the pro side for for utilizing a, a provider that is 
uh, burst in the system, um, you know, we're going to be familiar with best practices uh, and, and have those really baked into our processes. And so that, of course, works to our advantage from an efficiency and, and timeline perspective. Um, you know, and, and you've got, I guess, this is some, uh, not completely unique to SDC, but uh, our entire team is focused within, or, you know, dedicated within their focus area, uh, as well as our partners beyond that. So uh, if you just need database build from us for a particular study, we can definitely do that. If, if you don't need database build and, and uh, you need us to provide data management oversight or just consulting support, we can do that as well. The same is true with any of our services. Uh, and so, you know, that that's um, definitely pros. I guess the other thing would be, of course, the, the overhead expense uh, that you, you limit um, in terms of having to develop the internal processes, SOPs, et cetera. Um, we've already got that in place. So, well, you know, in terms of the labor costs related to uh, this uh, a one-off study by study basis it there may be a case that could be made for um, bringing things internal and, and in some cases that might be more beneficial uh, we feel like we can definitely make a case for going our route as well and be cost effective um, and I guess the cons for our, for our side is if going with a group such as our own you're gonna somewhat potentially limit your ability to develop that expertise in-house if you don't have it otherwise. And I guess the question becomes, is that expertise something you want to have in-house or do you want to rely on a partner uh, like SDC? So, um, Derek, do you want to jump in? Yeah, no, I, I think the only thing that I would add, which you've already touched on, is, is that, um, you know, the partners working within the, the platform really have the opportunity to create their own unique templates on the study workflow and, and reports that are going to match their their data management workflow and, and the processes by which they will you know effectively conduct the study for you and I think that's a, um, a pro in a lot of cases because they're going to be very very familiar with the, the platform uh, by developing these templates within the platform, whether they're therapeutic or not, it gives that um, that partner the opportunity to provide you with a level of expertise and and not have to do a kind of a one-off approach in terms of how they will do data management uh, for you for your particular study. And I think that ultimately, you know, should translate into some some cost efficiencies throughout that process by having a, a solution that they're comfortable with and the way that they go about working with the tools should translate to more efficient, you know, clinical and, and data management processes for your particular study. Great. Thanks, Derek. Um, I want to thank you both for walking us through this case study today. Certainly success, I think, um, was the result of the, uh, you know, by coming together, collaborating together, and really getting the sponsor what they needed in the end. Um, if you have any additional questions, here is contact information for both Derek and Jim. I will stay on the line for a little bit just to monitor any other questions that might come in. Um, other than that, as I mentioned, we will be sending um, today's deck out to you along with additional resources. And we just really appreciate everyone's time today. So thank you so much.